The Ravens beat the Cowboys in Dallas 28 to 25. And the Cowboys just look like the same old Cowboys in this game. I mean, pure domination by Baltimore, almost pulling basically, excuse me, it was pure domination by Baltimore before basically almost pulling a 28 to three with Tom Brady on the call to put themselves into 0 and 3. But the Ravens didn't do that. Even if you can't trust the Ravens with a fourth quarter lead, even if the Ravens wanted to go for two early in the season, toe on the line. Not trusting them in the fourth quarter is still kind of a thing. And they almost did it again here. Over 12 yards per play at the end of the first quarter for the Ravens just showed how they were dominating this game. I mean, you just keep seeing Derrick Henry getting more involved in this offense. The most carries, the most yards, the most yards per carry, and the most touchdowns in the game, in a single game on the season for him. 25 carries for 151 yards and two touchdowns is not easy to stop. Six yards per carry just absolutely broke this defense in half for Dallas. And the Ravens run away with it for basically all of three quarters. And, you know, really what I heavily expected with the Ravens signing Derrick Henry and bringing him in, it it took only until about week three, which is when it finally broke out. You signed Derrick Henry to take the pressure off Lamar. You aim to make him more comfortable, more confident, more efficient in the pocket as a passer. So he's not having as much usage. He can conserve his energy by not scrambling as much and just really become that lockdown guy from the pocket because we know that he's great off script. We know that he's hard to contain. We understand he's a two-time league MVP. But you look at the lowest passing attempts at 15 in a game for Lamar this season, and Derrick Henry does the rest. Even though the defense did almost blow it, you still have to look at that as a fact of this game. Dallas, again, can't stop the run. They get eight up on the ground. They can't run the ball themselves. They give up 274 rush yards on the ground and only put up a measly 51. They they can't run the football. They are the Buffalo Bills and what the Bills have been for the last four or five years rushing the football outside of Josh Allen. Yes, James Cook has finally started to coming around, which is great for the Bills. But we know there for a while, the Bills really needed to get a star running back. I remember pitching Saquon Barkley to be able to go to the Bills. This is where the Cowboys are. The Cowboys need a running back. The Cowboys are not good at running the football, and they cannot stop you from running the football, so you are going to wear them down, and the defense is going to be on the field for a long time. Just to show you how bad this rush defense is this year compared to last year, and we really see the exit of Dan Quinn really taking its toll here, the Cowboys have surrendered eight surrendered eight rushing touchdowns in three games this year, approaching the total of 14 they allowed in 17 total games last season. So if we do that math... Eight touchdowns over three games. That's 2.6 touchdowns a game. You multiply that by 17. The Cowboys are on pace to give up 45 rushing touchdowns this year. That'll be horrible. I don't think it'll happen that way. I think they'll make some moves at the trade deadline. But nonetheless, they've already given up half of what they did entirely last year, rushing touchdowns, in three games this year. Eight this year. 14 all of last year. I think the big turning point in this game as well was uh, CeeDee Lamb's fumble that was nine yards away from the end zone early in the second quarter. Scoring a touchdown right there would have gotten the Cowboys within four points really early that would have made the score 14 to 10, but the Ravens recovered that fumble. It led to Dallas not finding the end zone again until the fourth quarter, which they, of course, tried to garbage time their way back into this game. The Cowboys are the second team in the 21st century to have halftime deficits of 15 plus points in three straight home games. The wild card versus Green Bay last year when they lost 48-42 against the Saints last week when they lost 44-19, and now the Ravens when they lose 28-25, down by 15-plus points at halftime in three straight home games. They're only the second team to do it in the 21st century. And, you know, we did we really learn that much more about the Cowboys? We know that they love to play well in garbage time. Again, we know they can't run the football and they can't stop anybody from running the football. And they're just flat out being embarrassed in front of their home crowd. It's just another vintage Cowboys getting smacked around. Dak Prescott makes you feel like he'll win it in garbage time for you. Garbage time your way. You'll stat pad your way back into it. But at the end of the day, they're hype about Brandon Aubrey's 65 yard field goal, which is the longest in Cowboys history, the second longest in NFL history, and how this comeback could have been the biggest in Cowboys history, and how they're the first team this year to land an onside kick with the new rules. Nobody cares about any of that besides Cowboys fans. You didn't come away with the dub. You look piss poor on your home field. And for three straight home games, including a playoff game and a game you should have beat my Saints in, which, hey, I'm glad we clapped you guys up. You're embarrassing yourself. I knew the Ravens were going to beat y'all, but you're embarrassing yourself. Stop making more memes available to the public. It doesn't look well. And the Cowboys don't look good. 
they got to fix some things. Ravens win 28-23, absolute domination, almost pulling Atlanta Falcons. Super Bowl type of action with Tom Brady in the booth. 